to the seat of this carnival. But his delight is in the what, folks? Law. law of the Lord. And in his law does he what? Meditate. Meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. This is a highly power-packed chapter. Very straightforward. In Galatians chapter 5, in verse 16, the Bible says this. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and they are con these are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the Spirit, you're not in the law. Now the works of the, of the flesh which are, man are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, that means unbridled lust, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, uh, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, and revelings, and such like, of which I told you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Now watch carefully. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Amen. Let's begin by having prayer. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for all the people who come out tonight. I pray right now that the Holy Spirit will be our teacher and I submit myself to you. Pray that my mind, my heart will be yours. And I pray through the next few minutes, Lord, that we'll be able to see you work in lives in a powerful way. I pray, Lord, you'll help me. I pray you'll uh, fill me with your spirit. I pray that you'll be our teacher tonight. I pray you'll encourage each person here. I pray if there's a person here that's lost, that they might be saved. Pray if there's a person here who's out of fellowship with you, that their fellowship would be restored. Work in our hearts now, Lord. Encourage us and help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Now, through the services of Sunday and Monday, we've talked about, we said that our council, we asked our counselees to ask God three questions. Okay, anybody remember what the first question is? Is there any sin in my life that stands between you and me? Second question. You might remember that. Any hurt? Any hurt that I'm allowing to control me right now, either circumstantial or from a person? Third question. Any bitterness? Is there any bitterness in my heart right now, circumstantial or from a person? And if so, I ask you to forgive me, but because our heart is desperately wicked and you can know it, we have to say, God, I want you to take it out of my heart. Okay? Because God, and the Bible says that we can't know our own heart. God says, I search the heart. In fact, the Holy Spirit searches the heart. It's what 1 Corinthians 2.10 says. Now, the way that God speaks to us, see, you know, through the, through the issue of submitting ourselves to him. Now, the other way that God speaks to us, of course, is... Through his word. Now, the biggest thing that I find with our counselees is this. They're either not reading the Bible, or they're reading it as an exercise, not allowing the Spirit to teach them. Now, I want to ask you a question. How many of you have read down a chapter in your Bible, and when you got done, you did not know what you read? 
Okay? Now, you understand that that's serious? Now, you know, most, many of the people who, uh, who come to us, they, they're either, they've lost hope or they're losing hope, but they don't have any kind of a relationship with God through His Word. They may be reading it because Pastor Hernandez says, all right, now we've got a Bible reading schedule here and you need to read the Bible through the year. Now, honestly, there's, listen carefully to me. All scripture is profitable, but some scripture is more profitable than others. And so there's a place that we need to start reading and there are passages that need to become real to us for us to be able to move forward in our life to have a real, intimate, personal, and passionate relationship with God. Now, I'd like for you to take your Bibles and turn back to Proverbs 13. Okay, now I want, I want you to follow with me now because biblical counseling is a build-off. Okay? Most... And I don't want to offend anybody here. I'm just going to make a plain statement to you now. Most independent Baptist people are what we would describe as doer mentality, or they are what we would call performance-based Christians. It's all about what you do. Okay? And so, in essence, I'm spiritual because I do this and this and this and this. Okay, performance-based, doer mentality. Well, you're not spiritual because of what you do. Right. You're spiritual because of what you be. Yeah. And if you be a spirit-controlled person, then you will do properly. Yes, right. Okay, but, but see, the problem is, is most people got that turned around, and they got the cart before the horse, mm -hmm. and therefore in their life, they're doing the work, they're doing the work of God in the power of the flesh. Sure. And so what does God bless that? The answer is no. And their lives show it. You know, and they they, you know, they talk about walking with God, but they live an ungodly life. You know, they're angry, they're uh, they are uh, involved in Pornography, or they're involved in immorality, or they're involved in, uh, you know, uh, severe hurts. I mean, you name it. And, and they're living their life in the power of the flesh, and they think they're okay because they come to church three times a week, they go to visitation, and they do the Bible reading. But the bottom line is, if you're reading your Bible and you don't get anything out of it, that kind of becomes a pure, a pure drudgery. Right. Y'all with me? Yes. Amen. So in our counseling, we can assign reading. Bible reading. But if a person is not being a spirit-controlled person in fellowship, or first of all, in fellowship with God, that's the reason we ask those questions. If they're not in fellowship with God, they're not going to get anything out of their reading. Do you hear me? Because God doesn't bless Bible readers. Okay? And I'm going to say this now. He blesses Bible meditators. Okay? People who are spirit-controlled people who are asking God to teach them. They're submitting themselves to God and they're asking God to teach them. Now, I want you to notice in Proverbs 13 and verse 12, it says, oh, let's start with verse 10. Only, so in essence, a person who is a, a performance-based Christian, a doer mentality Christian, uh, and they may go to thus and so Baptist church, and they're involved in the bus ministry, they're involved in uh, cleaning the building, they're involved in doing this kind of stuff, but you know, they're angry, they're, they're deceitful, they lie, they deceive, they do all kinds of wicked things, and yet they think they're all right. Now the reason, what happens is, is that when they come to us, they're losing hope. 
marriage is falling apart. You know, there's fighting going on all the time. There's, you know, lust and living for their lusts and going off to do whatever they want to and, and those kinds of things. And then, you know, finding out that that doesn't work either. So look at verse 12, Proverbs, or verse 10. Proverbs 13, 10 says, only by what, folks? Pride cometh what? Contention. So whenever somebody's fighting with somebody, there's always what involved? Pride, because they're fighting for the lust. Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. Okay, a person who's a spirit-controlled person, who is focused on being taught by God, they can have wisdom. The well-advised. Now watch carefully in verse 12. What's that first word in verse 12, everybody? Oh. Hope. Hope deferred maketh the heart walk. That's what they are when they come to us. Their heart is sick. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Everybody with me? Yes. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. And so notice what it says. But when the desire cometh, it's a tree of life. Okay? When the desire cometh, it's a tree of life. Now listen to me. It's not about yelling, screaming, ranting, raving, yippee, yappy, and yahooing that makes you spiritual. Now I think we ought to have joy. But we ought not work that up in the flesh. Because we can't do that. We can have worldly joy. But notice it says, but when the desire comes. So uh, many people have been back to the book table and I say, you know, when, we, when you look at and read how to have a real relationship with God, the work of the Holy Spirit in your life, how to have a time with God and the thought life of a Christian, once we get people up doing that, about 90% of their problems go away. Okay? But we're teaching them that they have to allow, they have to first of all deal with their sin, and then secondly, they have to allow the Holy Spirit to teach them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so they have to ask Him to teach them. Amen. By the way, the Bible says He's the master teacher, so why wouldn't you want Him to teach you? Instead of just reading your Bible as a doer mentality exercise. You follow me? Yeah. There's no doer mentality here. Now, you know, Kim likes pine trees, and we, we bought a house and a new home, and we had a new landscape. We took the, was going to do the landscaping on it. So we were, we were down at the end of a, a road right near a cornfield, and they had a ditch going across in front of the house there. And so we planted a couple pine trees down there, and, you know, water would come down and sit in the ditch when it rained, and... You know, those pine trees, they got a lot of water. And I'm here to tell you, boy, they just, I mean, they were growing, you know, and just kept on growing. And it wasn't long before they were huge. And I told I kept saying to her, my goodness, look at how fast those things are growing. You know what? When a Christian comes to a place that they're going to submit themselves, they're going to deal with their sin every day, and they're going to deal with their sin at the point of impact, and they're going to submit to God, and they're going to ask to be a spirit-controlled person, then they're going to ask the Holy Spirit to teach them, the desire is going to come to grow and learn, and guess what? What's the Bible say? But when the desire cometh, it's like a tree of life. Got it? It's like, and we, we, I describe it like this, it's when the light bulb comes on. Okay? I remember when the light bulb came on for Lisa. Now, her, it took a little bit to get her light bulb going. But I remember when it came on. And, and you know, there are people that, you know, and I'm going to say this too. Uh, there are people that have been through our counseling program, and for a while they did well, but something happened, and then they're back to their old ways again. And you know, because they, what the whole problem is, is they've never truly repented of their lusts 
and yet they were seeking to pull the wool over your eyes and live a life that was over here in the world plus over here and yet try to make you think that they were doing what they should be doing. You know, that they were spiritual people, but they're not. Now, and so they go back to their old ways. And so being a doer mentality person for them is all about what I do. And therefore, they fail. They fail, and they're, they're angry, they're mad, they're upset, they don't like this, they don't like that, they're negative, they're critical, they're fault-finding, you know, they gossip, and they lie. And they always try to go out to go after to get somebody to blame for their failure. Now, notice verse 13 with me. Whoso despiseth the word shall be what? All right. Now, you remember that all of you kind of smiled at me when you said, yeah, I read my Bible and I read down a chapter, but I didn't know what I read. Yeah? Now, did you see the language here? Do you know what that word despising means? Does not give proper attention to. Mm. Whoso despises the word shall be what? Destroyed. Destroyed. It didn't say might be. It didn't say possibly could be. It said shall be destroyed. And that's what we see all around us. Because we see people that have chosen, okay, you know, church church is a good thing. Yes, I go to church, but you know, it's all about doing mentality, it's all about performance based, but my relationship with God is not a real relationship. It's not real, it's not intimate, it's not personal, it's not passionate, it's just something I do as another activity, but when I'm there, it kind of makes me feel good, but I go out and live like a devil. And I expect God to answer my prayers, I expect God to bless my life, even though I'm unwilling to submit to God. Are y'all with me? Yes. Now, I want you to notice, whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. Look at verse 15. Good understanding giveth what? Favor. Favor with who? God. God. Good understanding of this principle. But the way of transgressors is what? Hard. Hard. The people that come to us is they are losing hope and their life is hard. The way of transgressors is what? Hard. Hard. You know, in Proverbs 5 it says... The cords of your sins will wrap around you tighter and tighter and tighter. Now I want, to, I want you to understand now, without a real, intimate, personal, passionate relationship with God, being submitted to the Spirit of God to teach you, you are going to fail. And the way of the transgressor is what? Hard. Hard. Now you can't hold bitterness in your heart. You can't hold, as we talked about last night, unforgiveness in your heart and really expect God to do much with your life other than you know, the way of transgressors is what? Hard. You know, uh, so turn back to Ephesians, let's turn back to Ephesians 5, or Galatians 5. And I want to, you know, we're not in this business here. Uh, you know, I am, I am, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I am so tired 
of people who want to be contentious and cause strife and you know but they they can live any way they wish but they're constantly you know being contentious yeah. and it shows that they're not spirit controlled people so I want to show you look at verse 16 with me you know I've been meditating on this verse now for about a week pastor it just keeps coming up. Now look at what it says, ladies and gentlemen, follow closely. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the what? That's the flesh. So the answer is to do what? Walk in the spirit. Okay? Now, okay, the first step in walking in the Spirit is to deal with your sins. Remember the three questions so that you make sure that you're in fellowship with God. Every day, then, I come to my Bible. I go through that same process as well every morning. And, you know, and then secondly, I ask God when I, before I open my Bible, I want you to teach me today. I submit myself to you. I want you to teach me today. I want the Holy Spirit to give me his message for the day. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now see, you know, notice what it says here. And by the way, the Bible tells us the only way that we can mortify the flesh is through the power of the Holy Spirit. The only way. So I'm going to submit myself to God before I ever open this book. And I want to ask God to help me to Listen carefully to him today. I want Jesus. I want you to give me your message for me today. I submit myself to you, and I want you to teach me. Years ago, when I was in an undergrad, you know, I got saved when I was almost twenty years old. I didn't come from a Christian home, and I remember walking down the alley. From at, at school and walking down the alley across the post office parking lot and over to the school. <laughs> and every morning I'd go down there and I'd say, Lord, I am so far behind everybody else. I, I, I'm embarrassed that I'm this far behind. I want you to teach me. And he did. Mm-hmm. And he did. But it requires submission. Yes. You got to deal with your sins, and it requires submission. And then you ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Asking questions is submission. So please teach me today. Show me what you have for me. Give me your message. For me. And then there's a little booklet back there that has a formula about how, you know how to have a daily time with God. And, we revamped that several times. And yet, there's places that you should start. And I encourage every, every uh, person who's either a new believer or someone who has been a doer mentality Christian and now has come to the place of realizing that, you know, that I need to be a spirit controlled person, that I need to read the book of 1 John. You know why? Because. In those five little chapters, 33 times, God says he loves you. Now, it's important that you know that God loves you. And as you get in there, and then you find out, by the way, it's the book of fellowship. And we uh, spent a little bit of time on Sunday here talking about 1 John 1, 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not be true. Now, you got to, you got to, you know, you got to understand. You got to be in fellowship with God. Deal with your sin. Of course, first of all, you got to be saved. And for somebody here tonight that's not saved, let us help you. You don't want to die and go to hell. Hallelujah. And God wants to help you. Yes. And if you're doubting your salvation tonight, you come and see me, or you come and see Pastor, because we don't want you to fear going to hell. Going to uh, hell. We want you to understand. That you can know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you're a child of God. Amen. And that's important. 
So now when I so now I'm reading, I'm looking for as I'm reading my Bible, you know, I'm writing down. I've, I've got God's. I'm looking for God's message for me today. And so when I come to it, and you know what happens? It's like right out of the page. There it is. That's for you. The Holy Spirit says, "Stop right there." That's for you. You know, and I, I, I've read, I've been through the Bible, you know, hundreds of times, and study. And there was a period of time in my life that I read a book a week. And I've chosen in my life to be a learner. Amen. Now there are other good men out there that I've learned from, Amen. but I've also learned from. God's word. Now I want you to understand here, I want the Holy Spirit to teach me. And even after, you know, in my 43rd year of ministry now, I still want him to teach me. The other day, it was, it was, it's amazing. Kim and I, you know, I've pastor used that word several times, but it's amazing. Uh, Kim and I were, were, were doing our devotions and she she, we do our devotions separately from each other, our personal devotions. And so I, I, I came away and I said, you know, I've just been reading in, in Romans 7, and I and I then I've come down to Romans 8. And boy, God's message to me today was about the Holy Spirit, who was mentioned 19 times in Romans 8. And I'm like, Look at all of this. And I, 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 I looked at that chapter, I looked at that chapter, I looked at that chapter, but on that particular day, that chapter just kind of flew off the pages at me. And so I was telling her about it, and she says, well, that's really interesting. And I said, why is that? And she says, I was just reading Romans 8. And she says, boy, I was thinking, you know what? We need to emphasize this a little bit more in this chapter. She said, God only spoke to me about this. I said, He spoke to me right there about the same thing. Amen. And to that I say, Lisa, hallelujah, right? Hallelujah. And boy, I'm going to tell you what, if that don't float your boat, nothing will. Listen to me. That the God, listen carefully. Now listen. That the God of the universe, listen, the God of the universe cares enough about you to give you his message for you today. Wow. The God of the universe. You know. I saw guys out putting their boat in the river today, and I'm thinking about, well, that ought to float your boat. And so I want God to teach me. I'm, I'm looking for commands, and I'm, I'm writing them down. I'm looking for. Uh, you know, promises. My mind was down. And, you know, and so that message now, Catherine, I'm reading the Bible with a purpose. I'm looking for what? I'm looking for God's message for me today. And so when I get to that passage of God's message for me today, okay, now we started off tonight in Psalm 1. And the Psalm 1 says that God blesses Bible meditators. <laughs> Okay, now how many of y'all know how to worry? <laughs> Everybody in here, you know how to worry? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you keep thinking about something like that, that's meditation, by the way. <laughs> but the whole the whole scope of this is, is I want to get, I want to, so I see God's message to me, you know, and so now, this verse 16 says, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of flesh. So, now, okay, I've dealt with my sin today. I'm in fellowship with God. I've asked God to teach me. He showed me what he wants to teach me today. And you know, now I come to prayer. The only real praying I'm doing before I'm opening God is when I'm opening God's word is deal with my sin. And I want you to teach me. But now I'm asking God a question. What do you want me to pray about today? Instead of just throwing down a list and saying, a whole yard list of stuff and saying, well, I need to pray for Pastor today, and I need to pray for 
uh, Doris today, and I need to pray for Catherine today, and I need to pray for this today, I need to pray for that today. Uh, why not ask God what he wants you to pray about? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The Bible's plain. That he knows what you have need of even before you ask. And by the way, so I encourage people to write down that answer to prayer. So now in essence, all right, I've got something from God's word today. Now I realize that God can answer my prayer. Yeah. Me being here tonight is an answer to prayer. Amen. 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 I, I, I'm going to share it with you. And I, I shared it with you. Uh, I so much am thankful for pastor's compassion. I've already said that. But he didn't know. I didn't tell him. I had never met him. You know, we went, I went to, we went to the ballpark here now twice because the two ladies have heard me tell stories about that and they wanted to see it. And so they, we went out there and we've seen it. And you know, it's been, uh, it's, it's different now, but it's still an encouragement to me I took him in there and I showed up in the records and then my picture is on the wall. Up oh, there. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, and so that's cool. Uh, so Jackie took a picture of that. <laughs> and, yeah. and then I took him over to the record books and I said, see, I was a picture. You know, pictures don't hit, you know. I said, you see right there? I got a hit. <laughs> <laughs> I got one hit. They let me back one time. Nobody on, two outs. So I had to swing the bat and I got a base hit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> no, well, now don't, let's don't get too far. <laughs> I was satisfied with getting a hit because I never let you hit in batting practice. If I get news butt, I love to hit. But you know, I got a hit. But I got saved right after that season. I want you to listen to me carefully. The Lord told me that I would never play again because he had something else for me to do. Wow. And besides that, they play baseball on Sunday, and I'm supposed to be in the Lord's house on Sunday. Hallelujah. Thank God you're there. And I knew immediately that my location was in, you know, a problem with my Christianity. <coughs> And so I decided I would not play anymore. And I wrote to the Giants and told them that, and they thought I was crazy. <laughs> and they kept thinking I was trying to renegotiate my contract, and I said, no, I got saved. And they, and I, they wouldn't give me my unconditional release. Because back then, you were their property for life. So I said, well, why don't you give me my unconditional lease because I'm not playing anymore. And they said, give us back all the bonus money we gave you and we'll give you your unconditional lease. I said, I'm not doing that. Mama didn't raise no fool here. <laughs> I played, I, I played, and I fulfilled what I was supposed to do. But you know what? After I got saved, God gave me a burden for this place. Mm -hmm. Great Falls. Amen. And I, over years, told Kim, we need to go back out there. I want to show you where I play. We need to go back out there. We need to go back out there. We need to go back out there. I want to show you where I bought my wedding ring. What's your wedding? <laughs> Not mine. It's hers. And where I live. And I still remember the address, 2212 Street North. Wow. But it's tore down. It could, it could have been torn down back then, it was so bad. <laughs> but, you know what? God burdened my heart. And it was always there. Always there. Amen. And so we came out here, finally did come out here in 2017. And I prayed. I asked God if it was okay if I prayed this way. I believe in asking God questions. Amen. Is it okay if I would pray that I could come back out here and preach? And God said, yes, you can pray that way. And I remember when Pastor walked up in that conference after the first session, first 
break. My name is Arthur Hernandez. I'm the, I'm the pastor of Connick Baptist Church in Great Falls, Montana. I just wonder if you'd be willing to come and preach for me. Um, I didn't hesitate. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Now, and so we have through conversation, we decided to have a national conference here, and God blessed it. We had people from five states in a pandemic. Amen. Amen. Some people got saved, your lives got changed, and we're thankful for that. We're thankful for all your work in making that happen. Amen. And then as Pastor and I were talking, we were talking about coming back out here. There's four independent Baptist churches in Great Falls. On this trip, I will be preaching to three of those. Amen. Plus, Billings. Amen. God has allowed me to come back here and preach, and I expect him to do great things. Amen. 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 He answered my prayer. Amen. And then when pastors started talking to me about, we'd love to have you come out here and put your ministry here. When I saw his compassion, you know, I'm in it to help people. Mm. He's in it to help people. Amen. And I'm in with him. Amen. Whatever I can do to help, I will. That's the reason why I'm here. And many people would think, oh, well, that's all a bunch of silliness. No, it's God. Amen. Amen. That's right. I am so glad that I've had the opportunity to come back here. I don't know what the future holds with that. All I know is, is that we have this opportunity. I hope that through this conference here, that you're gonna, that if somebody in here learns how to have a real relationship with God and walks away from this conference and changes their life, it'll all be worth it. Very good, Lord. One person. Very good. But I'd love to see more people than that. Here. Amen. Maybe you're here tonight and you're critical. You're angry. You're mean, you're fault finding, you handle yourself ugly. It's always somebody else's problem. Has it ever dawned on you that you're just not walking in the spirit? Amen. But this I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not. It's a double negative there, by the way. Ye shall not, ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Praise the Lord. Now, understanding that the Apostle Paul makes it so clear to us here, he says in verse 17, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, and you cannot do the things that you would. So, in essence, if you're choosing to live in the power of the flesh, you're not going to be the Christian that God wants you to be. You're not going to be a Christian that God can reward. You're not going to be a Christian that God can bless. You're not going to be a Christian that God can use. And he goes on to talk about these. Now the works of the flesh are manifest in verse 19, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. By the way, the, the word for witchcraft there is the word for drugs. Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, endings, murders, drunkenness, and reverence. And reverence is a pretty bad word. Somebody may say, I haven't done none of that. Well, and such like, gotcha. Now some, and, you know, and he says here, of which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do and practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, I, I guarantee you this, a person out of fellowship with God is capable of doing anything in verses 19 to 21. Yeah. Okay, you might be saved, but you're capable of doing those things right there. However, if you can continually and habitually do those things and the Holy Spirit does not convict you, you're not saved. Right. Right. So you better understand that this is a test 
of whether or not you're truly saved or not. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't convict you here. You're not saved. So don't go around saying you can live like the devil and it's okay. And the Holy Spirit doesn't convict you because if, if you're saved, the Holy Spirit dwells you and he will convict you of this. But you know, the, the, real, the real deal here is in verse 22. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Those are the fruits of the Spirit. Those are the fruits of things that will be in your life, the positive things that will be in your life if you're walking in the Spirit. In essence, you're focused now on dealing with your sins, being in fellowship with God. You ask the Holy Spirit to fill you, control you, teach you, and teach you through His Word, and His Word's going to show things to you. And you're going to be reading your Bible with a purpose, and you're focusing in on that, and now you're going to be interested. And by the way, every day I ask God this question. Who do you want me to witness to today? Now, if God says you ought to go witness to Bob, maybe you ought to get off your blessed insurance and go do that because that means the Holy Spirit's working in his life. Amen? Amen. I, I also ask, I ask God every day, who do you want me to encourage today? You know why I ask God that question? It's because I want to be an encourager rather than being a negative person. And so I ask God, who do you want me to encourage to? Amen. Now, you know, Lisa talked about the six years it took for her to get, get moving. And she talked about cars and birthday cakes and all the different things. <laughs> how, how do you think that happened? It was compassion, but it was also, who do you want me to encourage to? And Kim asked him, who do you want me to encourage today? No. There are people who have went through our counseling program and have done extremely well. And you know, in this last year, as we've changed the methodology of the way of doing it during the pandemic, it has been better than ever. Amen. We're seeing more positive things happen. More lives change than probably many years of work. Amen. And I am very thankful for that. But you know, we still have people that they go through the program, but they're still doer mentality in their heart. They're still a performance-based Christian in their heart. And they're still living for their lust in their heart. They'll lie to you, they'll deceive you, They'll go behind your back, they'll do whatever they have to do to try to hurt you, and they'll blame you for it. That is a person that shows me that they made no change in their life. They're still living for their lusts. Now, again, I can't make anybody do anything. All I can do is give them the tools, and they are the ones that have to make the choice as to whether or not they want to change or not. Yeah. Amen? Amen. I can't do it for them. Of course, I can take the brunt of the punishment sometimes for people who live their life wickedly. But I'm telling you, God wants you to live your life as a spirit-controlled person. Amen. And it all starts by dealing with your sins. Asking the Holy Spirit to teach you and show me what I need in your word. Write it down, you know. And at the end of the day, at the end of my devotional time, I, like I said, I've got a list of things that I've asked God that I can thank Him for and praise Him for, and I write it down every day. Nice. And I've got 4,000, some odd, 4,100 and some odd there. Now, I want you to get it. I want you to understand. I want everybody to understand that without this, without this, you will fail. Yeah. So it's time to quit playing as a Christian. It's time to be open 
of the Holy Spirit and allow him to change you. Amen. Amen. Now, last thing I want to show you, and we're done. Romans 12. Okay? Now, don't miss this. Here's what God wants. Romans 12, verse 1. It says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. There it is. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a holy sacrifice, a holy a sacrifice, holy, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your what, folks? Reasonable. reasonable service. Why is it reasonable? Because God, Jesus Christ, gave his body for you. You should give yourself for him. Amen. All right, verse 2, here it is. Now watch. And be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed. Amen. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. God uses his word through the power of the Holy Spirit to transform you. And what we're in this for is transformation. Amen. We're not in it for performance-based Christianity. Amen. We're in it for transformation. Amen. Change. Hallelujah. Biblical, long-term change. Yes. To become a spirit-controlled person. To walk in the power of the Spirit. Yes. To have a real, intimate, personal, and passionate relationship with God. And then your life will change. And you'll see your life change dramatically. Yes, sir. You'll say, you'll say, you'll see your spirit change dramatically. Now, you know what? I'd love to see somebody here make change. God wants you to change. He didn't send me up here just to tickle your ears. <laughs> He sent me up here to help you understand that even you can change. Yes. And you can sit here and say, you can sit here and say, oh, I've messed up too much. My life is too bad. I can't change. There's a young lady sitting right here that her life was just in the same way as some people in this room. And she said, I want to change. And she has. And now God is using her. Praise the Lord. So don't sit here and tell me that you can't change. You can change if you want. But you're going to have to submit to God. And you're going to have to understand that this has to be real in your life. It can't be no nothing put on. You know, nothing like that. You know, I also got, asked God who he, wants, I asked him who he wants me to witness to today. Then I stop and be quiet and listen to God and remember Relationship is a two-way street. When he brings the person up that I want, he wants me to witness to, I pray for him and encourage them. And, and, and in the same way with encouraging people, and then I ask God every day, what can I praise you for? And I write it down on the back of that notebook. What can I praise you for today? Mm -hmm. All right. Now remember, I told you, I've told you that you have to stop, think, turn it over to God at the point of impact, right? Yes. All right, now, turn to Hebrews 12, or Hebrews 13 with me. Hebrews 13. All right, now, I want you to get this into your mind and get it into your heart, get it into your thinking that you're going to have impact moments every day. Satan's going to make sure that they're there, okay? Now, notice what Hebrews 13, 15 says. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God when? Continually. Continually that is the fruit of our lips, giving what? Thanks to his name. You see it? Praise and thanks when? Continually. Continually. And when that point of impact comes up every day, and it will, and it'll come up multiple times a day, Lord, I want to submit myself to you. I want to stop, think, I want to turn this over to you. 
What do you want me to praise you for? What do you want me to thank you for? So I am submitting to the God of the universe to control my thoughts at that moment so I won't let my mind run out to the junkyard. Amen. Amen. And immediately, it'll pop right here. Philippians 4 a. There is nothing in that passage that's negative. So I want to encourage you tonight. Philippians 4. Philippians 4. I want to encourage you tonight. Now we're on a course here. Okay? These are the basic points of making change in your life. Tomorrow night, we're going to show you some other very important things with this. But right now, I want you to get it. You have to change. You have to change. Amen. 